Peace, peace. Cabernet. That mess. Part three. Newbie study for Virginia UCC filing. I'm the newbie. I'm the newbie and you know, I'm the newbie and what? This third part, we can go ahead and extend it a little bit and just let it flow. Let it flow a little bit. See what happened. All right, so, been reading 5 BAC 5-30-40. Form fees and payments. We down here to the methods of payments. All right, the methods of payments. Filing fees and fees for services provided under this chapter may be paid by the following methods: payment by debit or credit card of a type approved by the filing office, and cash shall be accepted if paid in person at the filing office. All right, so debit and credit card, right? cash two personal check cashier's check and money order made payable to who state corporation commission or treasurer of Virginia shall be accepted for payment if drawn on a bank acceptable to the filing office or if the drawer is acceptable to the filing office all words that need to be understood. Personal checks, cashier's check, money order, checks, period. You know? So let's jump over here real quick and look at check. Over here with the Black's Law. You know what I mean? A so called Black's. Didn't really, you know I mean, didn't read. I say so called. Yeah. Is that word black? Oh boy. It can be flipped and bounced and turned around. Looking for the check, looking for the check. It's going to be me tomorrow looking for the check, looking for the check. But it ain't even going to be a check. It's going to be something else we're going to read about in this code. There it is. Check. Check. So now it is a commercial device intended for use as a temporary expedient for what? Actual money. And generally designed for what? Immediate payment and not for circulation. Right? You get that because you've cashed the check before. It's for immediate payment, but you can't, you know, put it in circulation. I mean, you can't spin it around like the dollar bill. It's not that kind of check. not that type of commercial device it is also a draft for payment of money it is an order for payment of money All right. it is a request to pay money these are all the things that a check is 
it is a draft or order upon a bank or banking house purporting to be drawn upon a deposit of funds for the payment at all events of a certain sum of money to a certain person therein named or to him or his order or to bearer and payable instantly on demand these are all the things that a check is check you checking it out check check one two it is also a bill of exchange drawn on a bank payable on demand case laws we ain't gonna go that deep it's other people that go that deep you can go check them out I suggest it and you know I mean somewhere in here I'm gonna put a link to said people alright so what else a check differs from an ordinary bill of exchange oh a thought just came to me I ain't heard a voice in a minute I wonder if that brother is all right. Huh. A check differs from an ordinary bill of exchange in that it is drawn on a bank or bankers and is payable immediately on presentment. It's another word to get familiar with. Presentment. Without days of grace, it is payable immediately on presentment and no acceptance as distinct from payment is required. It is supposed to be drawn upon a previous deposit of funds, right? And is an absolute appropriation of so much money in the hands of the bankers to the holder of the check. Run that back. And I need to um probably make the screen and these words bigger. I can like I got supervision or some shit. Put my damn glasses on. Strain in my eyes. Yeah. That's better. So we said a check differs from an ordinary bill of exchange in that it is drawn on a bank or bankers. It is drawn on a bank or bankers and is payable immediately on presentment without days of grace. It is payable immediately on presentment and no acceptance as distinct from payment is required. It is supposed to be drawn upon the previous deposit of funds and is an absolute appropriation of so much money in the hands of the bankers to the holder of the check All right the term check with the ordinary meaning of that term includes draft the only distinction being that in a draft the drawer is a bank while in the ordinary check, the drawer is an individual. All right, you're gonna have to learn what those words mean individually, and then put them back together. A check is also what? Dun, 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 dun. A contract. Right? Black's Law. A check is also a contract. And then you have the different types of checks. You know, cashier's check, crossed check, forged check, memorandum check, traveler's check. So, that's what a check is and we see 
when we get back over here. Is that a check? Personal check, cashier's check, and money order. Oh, should we go and look at money order? We saw what a check is and the kinds of checks. We could go into the different types. But we'll save that because as far as me, the newbie, and goes, uh, when I go to do this, it's going to be not with a check. It's going to be probably with paper cash or credit card, which gets us over here to payment three or part three or section three C number three C three payment by debit or credit card of a type approved by the filing office shall be accepted for the filing or submission of a document delivered to the filing office for filing by authorized electronic delivery method All right. Then, four, the filing office may accept payment via electronic funds under what? The National Automated Clearinghouse Association. NACA. <laughs> NACA. NACA. These are the NACA rules. The NACA rules. The filing office may accept payment via electronic funds under National Automated Clearinghouse Association rules from remitters who have entered into appropriate NACA NACA approved arrangements for such transfers and who authorize the relevant transfer pursuant to such arrangements and rules Nacha, you know, when I saw it, I had to go look it up. Nacha, and the automated clearing house, automated clearing house network. We need to get familiar with this. Why? Because we linked into it. You get a direct deposit. You pay bills with it, right? You get your tax refunds with it, right? I'm waiting to get one tomorrow, right? So, need to get familiar with this. Why? Because it's current passing around, you mean, with a lot of people involved other than yourself. Hidden fees and all kind of shit start showing up, you know what I mean? So, you gotta be aware of the chain. You know I mean? Your currency comes to you electronically. But who else has it passed by or in front of? Who else has, you mean, took a piece from out of that account? So, we need to get familiar with the NACA, I mean, NACHA, or the NACHA. NACHA. N-A-C-H-A N-A-C-H-A Alright So those are the methods of payment Then you got section D Overpayment and underpayment policies One The filing office shall notify the remitter Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back Let's go to the Black's Law real quick Before we read that and let's see what a remitter is. Remitter. Remittance. Remitter. Let's 
It is all worse, I heard the brothers and sisters that I listen to say. And the words that I, of course, subsequently looked up. Because, you know, I like to do stuff like that. You know, just study to, you know, be aware of what the hell is going on around me. this stuff, all this legalese, 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 legalese nuts, <coughs> remittance, these is all the re's, re's, I guess you should probably start with re. Dress you got re all kind of we'll come back to it. Let's first deal with this remitter. First, look at remit before we go to a remitter. Remit is what? To send or transmit. To send or transmit. As to remit money. Right? To send back as to remit a check. To give up, to annul, to relinquish as to remit a fine. Alright. So that's what remit is, to send or transmit. So then, a remitter. The relation back of a later defective title to an earlier valid title. Remitter occurs where he who has the true property or just proprietatis in lands inland. You know what I mean? Not on the ocean, but inland. But is out of possession thereof and has no right to enter without recovering possession in an action has afterwards the freehold cast upon him by some subsequent and of course defective title. In this case he is remitted or sent back by operation of law to his ancient and more certain title. All right. That is a remitter. A remitter is or should I say it's an action for real. Not even a is. What is a remitter? To re
remit, send back to the one that sends it back is the remitter and then it says the relation back of a later defective title to an earlier valid title the relation back of a later defective title to an earlier valid title it says that remitter occurs where he who has the true property or just proprietatis in lands but is out of possession thereof and has no right to enter without recovering possession in an action has afterwards the freehold cast upon him by some subsequent and of course defective title in this case he is remitted or sent back by operation of law to his ancient and more certain title then you got a remittance which is money sent by one person to another either in what specie bill of exchange check or otherwise remittance remit and the remitter which is now you know I mean being done you know I mean through naka nacha so upon receipt of a UCC record with an insufficient filing fee the filing office shall return the UCC record to the remitter with a notice stating the deficiency and may retain the filing fee right oh wait a minute back up back up look 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 I didn't even look at this one the filing office shall notify the remitter of the amount of any overpayment exceeding twenty four ninety nine but if it don't exceed twenty four ninety nine then what and send the remitter the appropriate procedure and form for requesting a refund listen listen the filing office shall notify the remitter of the amount of any overpayment exceeding twenty four ninety nine and send the remitter the appropriate procedure and form for requesting a refund the filing office shall refund an overpayment of $24.99 or less only upon the written request of the remitter. A request for a refund shall be delivered to the filing office within 12 months from the date of payment. It would probably be fun to just test that out but you know they'll keep twenty four ninety nine or less unless you send them a re a written request if it's over twenty four ninety nine then they'll send you a request for a refund right like you got your income tax refund you want to know what the refund is since we are already in the re's since we are already in the re's let's look at refund Looking at all this to make sense of the situation that we have found ourselves in.
going out to, you know what I mean, vote for, you know what I mean, two wings on the same bird, and, you know what I mean, always believe in the lies that they come with every time elections come around and they be on their campaign trail, we're going to talk about all that stuff because you need to know what it means when you're seeing it, the words the legal meanings of the word so a refund right what is a refund that which is refunded that's what it says and then there's the verb refund it is to repay or restore to return money in restitution or repayment so when you get your refund that's them paying you back for some money that they borrow from who? You. You. And the refund is that which is refunded. The refund is to repay or restore. To return money in restitution or repayment. <laughs> What else is it? It is to fund again or anew. Specifically, finance to borrow, usually by the sale of bonds, in order to pay off an existing loan with the what? Proceeds. I shall proceed and continue. So that's what a refund is. And I'm going to just cut it short right there at the refund. Because I mean, we over in the 27, 27 minutes. I'm going to call it that. I'm going to wrap this section three up. You know what I mean? We'll pick back up. You know what I mean? With the uncollected filing fee payment. Then we'll get into, you know what I mean, the statutory authorities. All this newbie information, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you had to approach it, how would you approach it? You study it, you know what I mean? Learn the words. Or, like, when you go to get a job, you know what I mean? And you go sit in front of the videotape and you learn all the um, job jargon. Well, it's the same thing. We have to learn the jobs jargon. They have a job and that job has a jargon that goes with it. You know what I mean? Just like it's things that you say at your job that, you know what I mean, you might not say anywhere else. You know what I mean? Or they have a different meaning somewhere else. So, having said that, Kevin know that mess. B W O E T V. Big up to all the B W O TVs out there. You know what I mean? All the ones here. You know what I mean? Putting out the necessary. You know what I mean? Mission to get them in form. Metian. Met. You know what I mean? Bringing that balance. That informate. Alright then. I ain't gonna hold y'all up.